What's going on, guys? It is Larry M.F. White, and I am here with a good friend, mentor, colleague of mine, Keith Everett, out of Grand Junction, Colorado. How are you doing, my friend? Awesome. Great Monday morning. Absolutely. So I'm super excited to, to have you here today. And, you know, I don't, I, I want to make sure that anybody who's listening, doesn't matter their company, doesn't matter how long they've been here in real estate, that they have a couple of nuggets that they can take away from this. So just to add some credibility, tell me, like, who the hell is Keith Everett over there? Like, why should we listen to you, sir? That's funny, because I was hearing you say Larry M.F. White, and I finally figured out what the M.F. stands for, my friend. Oh, yes, Larry, your friend White. There you go. Nailed it. <laughs> right. Well, my name, Keith Everett. I'm with Coldwell Banker Distinctive Properties. I've been in real estate 17 years, and okay. I've done everything from be that brand new agent, you know, drinking from the fire hose, not knowing what the hell's going on, to running a region of offices in the Rocky Mountains for distinctive properties. Yeah. So I've had teams. I've been a very successful agent myself. I've coached for Tom Ferry for a couple of years, and currently I'm director of education and for distinctive properties and back in real estate doing the work. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, so I've seen uh, you know your career blossom, right? Like we coach, like I coached you for a little while, and was like, man, you should be coaching other people at this point in time because like you bring so much to the table here. So, so kudos for you to be able to make it through that transition and wear all of these different hats. Now, we talked about, uh, you know, before I started recording, how old you looked and stuff. So when people know you've been in real estate for a long time, but you've seen some different market cycles. So if you've been in for 17 years, you saw the market just booming yes. when you probably first got in to crashing shortly after that right and yes. and so we've noticed like our markets tend to be cyclical and i, I want to spend a couple of minutes to to talk about some disruptions what kind of things do you see you know that are disrupting the marketplace right now well to take this with a grain of salt i've been saying that interest rates are going up since 2012. So I'm the eternal optimist though, and the disruptions going on in the market have uh, almost everything to do with technology. Um, companies okay. coming in, being technology based, having uh, eye buyers are becoming a big thing now. The, the whole idea that um, we are not going to be relevant as real, real estate agents and that noise that's out there tends to come from the people that have their interest in the technology side of real estate. Sure. Back in 1992, when NAR did a study, 67% of the people that bought a home used the real estate agent. Okay. That is above 90% now. So we're looking okay. at 91, 92% of the people that buy a home buy a real estate uh, buy with a real estate agent, and I think that we are uh, more relevant than ever. Um, especially when you look at the millennial buyers who are going to inherit a ton of wealth here in the next, you know, 10 years, they're going to be the richest generation ever because they're going to inherit the wealth from the baby boomers. Okay. Those guys that we complain about, you know, they need their hand held on everything. They got the little ribbon for participating want us. Now they're going to do a lot of the research. They're going to use technology to find homes and to find agents. Yeah. They want us to guide them through that process. Do you think that will affect Realtors' commissions? Like if the client's coming to us with more knowledge about a house, more knowledge than a neighborhood, does that affect our commission? Do we play on price or value? I think that it's going to put as much pressure on commissions as during the recession when we had um, the, all the discount uh, type brokerages come in to play. I mean, in Colorado, we have our real estate commissions actually creating rules to prevent discount brokers and brokers that don't do the entire job because that's where the lawsuits are coming from. So um, I, yes and no. Um, I do think that there's going to be uh, pressure on commissions, but I don't think it's going to be any greater than what we saw during the recession or, you know, when you have a, a broker that won't fight for their, their 
buyer or their seller, they're not doing the full job. They're, those guys are the ones that don't care about their commission. They'll, they'll slide and they'll put the pressure on the professionals that are doing the job the right way. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's good to know. So, so you mentioned a lot with the disruption in the marketplace coming from technology, coming from the iBuyer solutions. Explain to everybody what, what you consider like iBuyer. Well, an iBuyer is, um, there, there are a few out there right now, and um, both Keller and Coldwell are going to an iBuyer, so the two big dogs in the, in the space are going to do some form of iBuyer. And basically, it's, um, it's a way to guarantee a price on a house that's going to sell. I mean, you've probably seen somebody in everybody's market that has done, if we don't sell your house, we'll buy it. Well, they're sure. 15, 20% below the market value. So they know that, you know, if they have to buy it, they're going to be able to sell it and not lose money. Yeah. So that, so it's essentially an I buyers providing an exit strategy or a guaranteed price that look, we don't do the job. We always have this to fall back on at the end of the day. Exactly. And they're going to be those rare people that maybe inherited a home or they've been in a home for 30 years. They paid it off. It's increased so much. They don't want to go through the hassle of actually putting it on the market, staging it, and having to deal with it, they just want the money and they just want to get out. Um, okay. I don't see that as being a majority by far. Um, sure. To listen to some, you know, people that are top uh, top dogs in our industry talking about this, and it it makes sense to get in that space and uh, use that as a, a like you said, an exit strategy in case your home doesn't sell as fast as you need it to, or for the price mm -hmm. that you know that you need it to. Okay. Let me ask you, uh, continuing on with the market, you see any potential dips or anything? So in my eyes, our political climate is more unstable than I've ever seen, right? We have impeachment processes. We have these total polar opposite sides. We have a stock market that hasn't seen a dip since the last recession. I mean, do you remember when we used to talk about like the days like, oh my gosh, what if we hit 2000 and now like 2000 isn't even the floor for our stock market, right? Like, so like how long does that last? Are we, is there something looming? What are your thoughts on that? Yes. <laughs> no, I agree 1 million percent. The political climate scares the crap out of me. I am a political science major you know, in college. That's what I studied. So I've watched this stuff happen, you know, since the 80s. And it is ugly. And this last midterm election, how it, you know, affected the market was worse than in, in our areas, worse than what we saw during a, res, a regular presidential election previously. So okay. it is so contentious out there. Um, but it makes me remember one of my first educators in real estate said, if you want to sell more real estate, stop watching the news. Ooh, if you want to start selling more real estate, stop watching the news. I like that nugget right there. I mean, we don't have um, any control over that. Sure. We control our actions and that's it. Um, we can let the doom and gloom affect us, you know, or we can do our job. And, and the thing that I'm, I'm not trying to skirt the, the point, but sure. I do agree with you. And I do think we've already seen a slowdown in Colorado because we have a Democratic governor, Democratic House and Senate, and they passed some legislation on oil and gas that freaked the oil and gas companies out and they left the state. And it hadn't really no impact on what their actual, you know, operations were, or very little impact. It was the mindset of those guys that said, we're out. So um, the, the point it, that I would like to make is that if you are looking at doing better business, you focus on your business, you stop paying attention to the noise and the, and the news, and there are going to be 10 or 15 people in your office and in every office that are going to watch that, that are going to put their head in you know, the sand, and then you get to do your business. And those All guys right. so, as, as our boy Tom Ferry says, right, stay in your lane. Focus on, on what you're good at at the end of the day. So let's transition and go in towards wrapping this up here. So, right, there's technology politics, stocks, there's all of this other stuff that's kind of polluting what we should be focusing on. If you're coaching a new agent, somebody that's getting in, somebody that's going full time, an agent that's been around their, where their business is stagnating on, what are the top two or three things that agents have to be doing right now? 
Um, I am a huge proponent of old school face-to-face -face conversations of, about real estate. I just got back into sales recently mm -hmm. and I have been coaching and I've been training all these agents to, and I have heard all of their, their noise about why it's so hard. And I just talk to people and stuff has fallen out of the trees. Don't forget this is a personal uh, touch business. It's face to face. It's about relationships and make sure you're talking to people. I mean, if you come into a market and you don't know anybody, then get out and, you know, knock on doors, join, you know, a club, you know, do something that you love doing your passionate about and there are going to be others around you that are going to see that and be attracted to you so, so if i'm hearing you correctly lead generation every single day 100 percent talking to people and uh you can i like to think of you know internet leads as icing on the cake floor duty as icing on the cake but you gotta mm -hmm. bring the cake first you know and those ingredients are about talking to your past clients your sphere of influence you know getting out and doing open houses um, I, I just did a talk in Denver and one of the things that I, I just heard coming out of my mouth is you can't, you know, you've got to be out talking to people. You've got to, right. but, but the thing is, what do you say? And the number one thing anybody can do to improve as a real estate agent, no matter what level you are on is lead is, is role playing scripts and dialogues and objection handling. And there's a reason why some of the most successful classes for Tom Ferry or Brian Buffini or, you know, Mike Ferry is all about scripts and dialogues. Right. I mean, and going out and practicing what to say gives you the confidence to actually have those conversations. Well, I mean, we're in one of the few industries, right? With 90 hours of coursework, we can go help somebody with the largest financial decision of most people's lives. Like, if we were going to operate on your old hip or something like that, right? We probably wouldn't go to a doctor that didn't finish residency. Be like, oh yeah, I read a book one time, like I got this, right? Like it wouldn't happen, right. but that's allowed here, which is where you see people literally expand the gap, right? Between good and great at the end of the day, because there's people that, that practice, that continue education, that continue learning to improve themselves yeah. as a new agent you have to shrink that learning curve as fast as possible. How do you do that? You practice daily. There's no downtime. If you don't have something to do, it's practice, it's education, it's leading by example, practicing with for sale by owners and other people if your friends don't want to role play it with you. Right. Yeah, I mean, the average NFL team practices 16 hours on the practice field, not watching film, not in the weight room, but 16 hours on the field for every hour on game day. Okay. So how much time, I mean, I joke around, we, we practice, you know, we look at a script, we may read a script, we, you know, do we ever practice it rarely, and we go out and practice on 16, you know, listings. listings. Yeah. So, you know, like Tom says, you know, my God, people don't practice on your clients, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All but, right. So lead generation is the first one. Every single day, agents have to be doing it. What would be the second nugget that we, we have to leave agents with? Um, I, I like the idea of focus and, you know, the, the, the days of believing that you can multitask should be gone. It's just something that doesn't happen. Um, I, this is time management, but it comes back to lead generation. That's got to be the one thing that you do. You're managing your time. That's the one thing that happens every day that you got to do. I mean, on my phone, I've got a Pomodoro timer. And okay. it, it, it ticks for 25 minutes. And I can't get up from my desk from doing my lead generation until it gives me a little, you know, bell. And then I go five, you know, five minutes get a drink of water, walk around, get a little energy, come back, set the phone door timer for 25 more minutes. Got ADD. I can't do what, it. What kind, of time, what kind of timer is that? It's called Pomodoro. P-O-M-O-D-O-R-O. -O -O, and it comes from an Italian uh, college student that had ADD. And he had uh, challenges being able to stay focused. So he took his mom's kitchen timer and timed, you know, turned it for 25 yeah. minutes. You know that? Yeah. You know, that's going on in the background. And every time he would stray, he'd remember, hey, back to, to, to studying. Well, it, Pomodoro is Italian for tomato. And the kitchen timer was a tomato. Okay. Uh, that's where the, the whole idea comes from. There are tons of free apps out there. Um, uh, there's, you know, uh, several 
you know, websites that'll teach you how to do it, but it's sure. super simple. Sit down and do for 25 minutes what you got to do. Take a break. Yeah. And, and the, the psychology behind it supports that 25 minutes is a great amount of time for you to work on something without getting distracted. And I remember going through some time blocking exercises with you, right? When we were coaching, you know, like, dude, you're all over the place. Like, no, no, no. like, let's just focus here for a little bit of time. So that's great. And I wanted to know the name of the app because when you said it first, I thought it was some old thing like an abacus or something like that with your age. But like, I'm, I'm glad to see that you're keeping up with technology and moving yeah. forward. Yeah, I got the sands of time. Just flip yeah. The time, but yeah. So yeah, no, it's, it's a super, um, super cool app. And you can use it get your timer if you want to. It doesn't matter. It's just something yeah. to stay focused for that 25 minutes because real estate's going to happen. Sure. All that stuff, those inspection objections, those calls from your sellers, all that stuff's going to happen. But is there one hour of time that you can let all that go away and just focus? Because this is the lifeline for your business. Singularity of focus. So just to kind of recap, we have all kinds of things that are going on right now, all kinds of distractions, right? Like if we want to focus or, or like if we're going to be successful in real estate, how we combat those is one, we don't watch the news. Two, we lead generate every single day. And then three, we stay focused. And I'm assuming that's gonna be on our dollar productive behavior, like lead generation, like lead follow-up, um, you know, appointment setting, negotiations, et cetera, correct? 100%. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, okay, so we're in a market where our average sales price is just below 300000 And I've done this exercise with plenty of agents to know that I'm right on to say that if you talk to eight people a day about real estate, you will walk home netting $200,000 a year. Okay. I mean, that's what the numbers of an average conversion of for every one person you talk to, like Tom says, you know, for every 40 people you talk to, you get one deal. Sure. You know, as you, as you get better, that might be for every 25 people you talk to. Right. And you, it might be all every 80 people you talk to. But yeah. you talk to eight people a day in order to walk home with $200,000. I mean, it, it boggles the mind how simple it is. It's just not easy. So. Are you interested or committed in real estate? There you go. Yep. Right? That's what it comes down to. A lot of people want to be that top producing agent they don't want to necessarily do all the things that it takes to get that. And that's one of those things. Contacts every single day, every single day. 100%. Well, beautiful. Keith, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your education, your nuggets um, for all of the agents that'll join us on here. Um, I will make sure that you're tagged on this so people can connect with you as well if they need awesome. any tools or resources. I thank you for your time, my friend, and I will talk to you soon. Sounds great. Thank you, Larry.